Toby. Today I am so excited to start the um, vlog for Spring Fling a Wing. <laughs> it starts today, which is Wednesday, and goes until Sunday. Um, it is a spooky readathon. There are two prompts for books, but I'm pretty sure. I'm only gonna be doing one because you guys know if you watch any of my other vlogs. Readathons, rarely, um, I rarely read everything that I wanna read, which is totally fine. Um, but this is one of my favorite readathons. This is the first time I think they've done a spring one. So the prompt that I'm gonna be doing is one that read yellow on the cover. We're gonna be reading Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumpet. I love this cover. The title is incredible. I actually saw this originally on Books and Lala's channel on a haul, I believe, and she was talking about that she wants to read more haunted house books and this one came up. So this is a haunted house story and all I know is that it has a little bit of social commentary because you're following, it mentions modern day trans experience here on the blurb. I haven't read everything else, just like the very basic one. And the author is a trans woman, so it's own voices. So I'm very curious about this. How is a haunted house story? I don't know, but I am super excited about it. I think it's just a little over 250 pages, so I think this is going to be a fast read. So this is going to be the one that we are reading. And if I happen to finish this, we can check out the other prompt and see if I can find another book to read. Um, and then I know the other prompt is to like buy a fall themed drink or make a fall themed dessert or something i'll probably just go buy something <laughs> but we will make it happen it is about five o'clock now i got off work a bit earlier but i was just relaxing i actually took a nap because i was so tired and i was debating if i wanted to make coffee or tea so i decided to make some tea to compromise so hopefully i won't stay up too late but yeah i'm currently on pediatric cardiology block um, and it's going well. It's one of the more chill blocks. However, um, COVID is going around again and one of my co-interns got it. So I, if you're on cardiology, you're also on Jeopardy. So you get called in if anyone gets sick from my intern class. So I had to cover hers and she was on picky. So I had to work that a couple times. So hopefully I won't get called in anymore for the rest of the week. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't have any weekend shifts. So I think I'm good. So I think I'll have lots of time to read this week. Let's open up some fun packages that I, I hope my identity is my address, no. Some fun packages that I've been waiting for this vlog to start. Okay, so this first one here is from a shop called A Stranger Dream, which I have bought from before. And they make like spooky bookmarks and illustrations. And she was having a sale because I believe she's like, She's recently diagnosed with breast cancer and she was having a big sale because she needs to fund it, which is just so sad. I wanted to support her because I've already bought from her before and I love her illustrations. Um, so yes, let us see. Oh, it's so pretty. And there's some extra goodies in here. Oh, she sent, oh, that is so nice, my extra ones. Okay, so first I'll show you the extra ones that I got. This one here with like some witches. This is very Halloween-y. And then some black cats, little bookmark. This one here is the business card bookmark. It's just a like Ouija board style and then um, like info, which I will definitely link this shop down below. But this is the bookmark that I got. And it, I love that you can pick if you want a tassel or not. So this is what the shop logo looks like. Stranger Dream. I have been wanting this bookmark, but it's been sold out. Every time I try to go, <gasps> How cute, and it's a little Coraline bookmark. How cute, with a little cat and the buttons. I'm back. I couldn't find tea, so I actually just made apple cider, which is exciting, which is actually a like fall themed drink, so that's. Now we have some candles from Novel Wicks. I have been wanting to purchase from them, although I have to say her shop is a little, ex her shop is expensive for candles and she brought back the horror candles this is the shop that like olivia reads a latte like talks about all the time and i wanted to check it out and i meant to use her coupon code i literally typed it in and then instead of clicking apply i clicked purchase so i, I didn't even use the coupon which was just great <laughs> but um she brought back the horror candle which sounds like the description sounds like my perfect candle and then she had this one other candle which is exciting so Let's 
see. Oh, how cute. Look at the packaging in the inside. So cute. All right, so first a little card where she wrote my name. How cute. It says, thank you for shopping small with me. They're a little bigger than I thought. I think I just got the eight ounce pens. Yeah, the eight ounce 10. Okay, okay. So I got Horror, which is spiced cider and chestnut. Look at that. Okay, let's see. Oh, it smells a little bit different, but... Oh, that does smell good. It's like, look at those glitters. And it has the um, like wood wick, so it flickers like a um, campfire. Oh, that smells so good. Can't even like describe the scent, but I really, really like it. It smells like out in the woods in a cabin. And you're like baking fall goods. <laughs> That's what it just, because it's like a little hint of sweet but not, but it's not super sweet because I don't like sweet scents. Okay, that smells really, really good. Really, really like that. All right, and then the next one I got, I saw this and I was like, this was made for me. Literally made for me, so was that one. Okay, Gotham City, are you kidding me? Okay, so this is Bergmont, Lavender, and Sandalwood, which are also scents that I like, so let's see. Oh, interesting. This one's a little bit more fresh. I also can't smell very well. Fun fact. <laughs> this one definitely smells a bit like fresher. Um, I feel like Gotham City would smell a little bit dirtier than this, but you definitely, <laughs> not that you would want your candle to smell dirty. Yeah, I really like this because it does have like a kind of more um, cologne scent, which you would think of because you would think like Bruce Wayne would kind of smell like that. Yeah, I like this because it's not, it's not super strong, but not in a bad way. So this one has like blue glitteries. I feel like this one's gonna smell really good burn, burning. Okay, so I really, really, I'm really, really happy with these two candles. There are the two, again, that I got. How amazing, are these not just me perfectly? I just saw that um, Books and La La is, going, is about to do some live sprints. So I may hop in on that and, which I've never done before, I've never done live sprints. Sometimes I'll go, um, watch past sprints, but I'll never watch live ones. So maybe we'll do that because why not? I finished one of their sprints. They did like a 20 minute one, and then they were, they're in the middle of a 30 minute one, but I was getting hungry, so I ate dinner. I, I didn't read that far. You guys know I read slow. <laughs> I got to page 16, um, and then I was debating if I wanted to go out and get some wine so I can properly relax, and then I remembered today's Wednesday, which means a new episode of Moon Night comes out which is like, oh, the show is so great. It's one of the Marvel series on Disney Plus if you haven't watched it yet, starring Oscar Isaac, who is a beautiful man. One of my favorites, I've talked about him before. I love him so much, so now I'm definitely, definitely gonna venture out into the cold, because it's freaking cold. Don't get me started. Like, this Chicago weather is honestly annoying me. <laughs> like, it's literally, let's see how cold it is. Okay, Google. What's the weather like outside? Right now in Chicago, it's 36 degrees and cloudy. Tonight, the forecast is around 37 with showers. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's 28. 28 degrees. Feels like it's 28, that's ridiculous. It's almost May. I'm, I don't understand. I'm gonna venture out so that I can drink my wine and watch Moon Night. I'm so excited, have myself a little night. All right, I'm going to light my candle. I got my wine. There is three minutes left of their current sprint, so I'm just gonna wait for the next one. But let's go ahead and light it. I'm so excited. I finished my sprint. I'm on page like 30. Something crazy just happened. I am liking the book. I am going to bake some fries. Because <laughs> I want some. Turn off the light. The, they are finishing up the sprint here. Cheers. I'm already 
for bed and I finished Moon Knight and that was a very sad episode. What the heck? I, I, I actually cried. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, I swear Marvel, like you never know what you're gonna get with Marvel. Oh, that's why I love it so much. But yeah, it was so good. But now I just feel like relaxing in bed, so I don't think I'm gonna read anymore. I know I only read 30 pages today, which is not a lot for a uh, readathon. <laughs> but, you know, we're gonna try harder tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know what happened today. Um, but, you know, I had a good day, so it's fine. I will catch up with you guys tomorrow, and hopefully we will read a bit more i do have my afternoon clinic um tomorrow so i should still i probably won't get home until like four ish maybe a little earlier it depends like how many patients come and stuff but i'll get home a little earlier maybe i won't be as tired when i get home and i can just like read when i get home but. good morning it is thursday and i thought i would do a little outfit of the day before i head off to work because i really like it <laughs> I'm wearing this, like, I call this my Dark Academia shirt because it gives me Dark Academia vibes. Isn't it so pretty? And it has, like, a little black tie and has, like, little pearl details. I think it's so cute. Um, this is from Forever 21. And then I'm wearing my favorite, I'm bad at this, I'm wearing my favorite um, pants. These are from Target. I think I've shown these before. These are literally the most comfortable pants in the entire world. They feel like pajamas. Like, they're amazing. I need to find more. They're like stretchy and just incredible and they look nice. And then I guess I'm gonna wear these shoes. They're just like loafers brand, I don't know, Gianni Binney. I don't know, I found them at Dillard's I think. But they're very comfy flats I have to say. I'm going to head off to work now. All right, hello, Ooh, my hair looks a mess, it's raining. Um, I am back from work. The day was a like wild day. I don't know what, what kind of day it was, but my attending, or the attending who's like on service, wasn't at the hospital, she was at a different location. So all the questions, like people had questions about like the patients that were consulted on, I had to like message her and it was just very chaotic. And then we had two consults like in the morning, but then I also have to work in the cardio clinic and like help out there. And then I had a clinic this afternoon, so it was just like a lot going on. But one of the consults, they they canceled it and decided to just have them follow up outpatient. But anyways, it was just like a mess. And then only one patient came in my clinic, but then I had to go see an acute care because like I wasn't doing anything. So it was just like a lot happening. Um, but yeah, today was a good day. I felt like today was one of those days where I was like making decisions and I felt like I was a doctor. Cause some days you don't feel like a doctor. <laughs> But today I was like making decisions, doing things on my own. So yeah, it felt good in that sense, but I'm glad to be home. <laughs> now I think yeah and I took a nap I was just sitting on my couch <laughs> resting and then I fell asleep um, and I have tidied up I ate some Chipotle ordered some Chipotle and ate it and now I can sit and read a bit of tell me I'm worthless I don't think I actually told you guys what I learned what's happening in this book so far are following this girl named Alice one of the scenes she was invited to this house party and she goes and she meets this other girl there and she takes her home and then something crazy happens at the house <laughs> and then you find out there's this other girl you don't she said it was her ex-girlfriend but then she's like it's not my ex-girlfriend I forgot her name what was her name there's like a girl named Hannah that like was friends with them, but then her ex was named something else. I can't remember. Isla, that's right. Okay, so you keep hearing about this girl named Isla who was her ex, maybe wasn't her ex, I'm not quite sure, but something went down with them. We don't know what yet, but it seems intense. And then she's also talking about Hannah, like I said, who was their friend, but I don't know. So that is curious. I'm curious to find out what in the world went down because it seems very intense. 
the main character Alice. She's very like down and she is trans. She's a trans woman and she's very like um, anxious like to go out and be around people. She always seems kind of scared because she doesn't know how people are gonna react to her. Yeah, like I said, something just happened when she brought this girl home from the party, something wild happened, like creepy scary did it actually happen i don't know that's a great question i don't know we'll find out but yeah i'm going to keep reading because i'm curious oh i didn't mention that oh wait i have a couple updates did i talk i think i already talked about moon Knight, but the live yesterday was actually was so much fun i've never done an actual live of reading sprints like i said i'll usually just watch them later Normally because I don't even know when they're going on or I can't, you can see little Toby, or I can't um, make it. But yeah, it was really fun to do that with everyone and um, hear them talk about the books they're reading, what everyone else is reading at the same time. And everyone was like freaking out because apparently Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin is staying in a cabin by himself. And it was really funny what people were saying. Anyways, yeah, that was a good time. So I'm gonna sit and read a bit of this and I will update you guys later. laundry that I need to fold but I am back from work I got back a little bit ago around like 2 I think 2 30 I don't know and then I went out to my pool area and read for a little bit so I am past the 100 page mark now of tell me I'm worthless and I am still enjoying it I'm not enjoying it as much I have to say so now we've got a little bit more of what happened between Alice who is the trans woman that we were following before then I told you that there was something that went down with her and this girl named Isla. Um, and we found out what supposedly happened. You're still not really sure what's going on with it. Oh, I'm heating up some coffee <laughs> that I got at work. So you're also following Isla. That was like a new perspective. And then you get the perspective of the house. So something happened when they were younger. Um, I think when they were in college, they went to this house with that other girl that I was saying, Hannah, that was like a friend of theirs. And she didn't make it out we don't know what happened yet but that's like on the back it's not a spoiler or anything so you're getting the perspective of the house and this house is like you, is uh people get drawn to it and then yeah like if you go in you don't come out people go there and like kill themselves or like animals go and don't come out or but people get like drawn to this house and the house is like speaking to them to come it's really strange um so i like all that stuff right the thing that's kind of like taking me out of the book a little bit is that especially in alice's perspective but even a little bit with isla you can definitely tell the author is putting a lot of her beliefs and thoughts and like what how she feels about certain topics you can tell you can tell she's definitely putting it in here and some of it kind of feels like an essay. Like I'm just reading an essay about something that she thought about and she was like, decided to put it in this book. So Alice will be thinking about something and then it's kind of like stream of consciousness. So she'll just kind of like think about something, then it'll transition into something else, then it'll transition into her thinking about something else, right? Like how normal people think. But then some of the stuff she thinks about is so like political, which isn't, doesn't bother me at all. But it kind of feels like an essay and it's just like, what is the, like, is this doesn't have anything to do with the plot. And it, it really feels like the author is just like, had these, has these ideas and she like wanted to get them out there. And so she put it kind of like this. And it really feels like you're kind of reading an, reading an essay. And then once Alice finishes having these like thoughts about all these political things and whatever else, and we get back into like the plot of the story, I like it so much better. I hope that made sense. So those kind of aspects are kind of taking me out of it a little bit, but like the rest of it, I'm really enjoying it and I'm really curious where it's gonna go. This book is very graphic. Oh, that's the word. <laughs> it's very graphic, not holding back, it's brutal. I could see, like I'm not a person who needs trigger warnings and this hasn't triggered me in any way, but I could see how people could get like triggered with this book and how it could be like harmful for some people and I like don't feel that with a lot of books so that's saying something and i know that the author put a trigger warning at the beginning but yeah some of the stuff i'm just like i could see people getting yeah being triggered by some of the stuff in here it's pretty intense 
Um, and I'm also curious, once I finish this book, and I know the author is a trans woman, and we're getting the own's voice perspective, but I'm curious how other trans people feel about this. For example, Isla, who was Alice's friend, is like going to protest against trans people and doesn't think that trans women are women and should not be using like female bathrooms. Um, and so like all of that I could see could just be so like harmful to read. So I'm really curious if we take away those like essay type thought monologue things that we get when we're in Alice's perspective. I'm really enjoying it and it is creepy and weird. So yeah, I'm liking it, but I'm gonna take a break now. I'm gonna drink my coffee. I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos and relax a little bit. And then I am meeting one of my friends for ramen. We've been like putting a rain check on it for like, I think a month now. <laughs> um, so we're gonna meet up for ramen later tonight, which I'm excited about. We're going to this place called Strings, which I will show you all. It is literally, me and my sister went there when she came to visit me um, a, a couple months ago. It is literally the best ramen I have ever had in my entire life. Me and my sister were like freaking out. It is so good. And apparently it's like one of the top rated restaurants in Chicago. We didn't even know. We just randomly went in there. It's called Strings. I'll link it down below. It is so good. It's so good. Hi. now around 11 o'clock i know i didn't update you all yesterday after ramen i came home and i was so tired my body just completely crashed and i literally was in bed at like 8 p.m i just like sat on my couch stared at the tv and then i just went to bed <laughs> i was so tired so i woke up super early this morning at like six o'clock and then i was just reading which i will get into just relaxing i cleaned up a little bit did some planning yeah just just some adulting things and chilling out um i think my body was just so tired because i realized i was like why am i so tired but i realized i worked sunday because i had to cover a shift i mentioned that i may have to cover shifts i had to cover a shift last sunday and this whole week was like pretty busy even though i guess i like got off work early sometimes it was still a busy stressful week and then i think i was like anxious the whole week so I didn't sleep very well just because I like didn't know if I was gonna get called into work or I did get called into work so I was anxious about that and then I just I just don't think I slept well at all and then finally when the week was over my body was like okay finally you can just crash and relax so I slept so long it was actually so nice so I feel so much better now um but yes I am I got ready because I'm going to head out to their grocery store I can't remember if I mentioned but I'm having some people over today for a little pool party because my place is like an indoor well you guys have seen it where I like go down and read we have like an indoor pool area and it's super nice and it's like warm um yeah and I'm just like so tired of Chicago weather like today is another gloomy rainy Day and I'm so sick of it so I was like I'm just gonna pretend it's summer I'm gonna have people over I'm gonna go to the pool and drink and relax and have fun <laughs> so I have to go to the grocery store to buy some things because I'm gonna make sangria for us to drink which should be fun so I have to like get it because it has to sit in the fruit and stuff which I will show you guys how I make it I'm gonna try it a little different this time with rosé instead of red wine make it a little bit lighter I think we'll see let's talk about the book I did read a bit of this yesterday and today and I am now officially past the halfway mark and I just hit part two which is called irreversible damage although we just had some like pretty well we've had and recently just had a very explicit like sexual sex very explicit sex scenes and then there was like a little bit earlier some very explicit sexual content and I personally like, I don't think there's anything wrong with it like whatever write whatever you want read whatever you want I don't care <laughs> but I personally don't like it when it's just like constant very explicit 
sexual content just like over and over i like it gets it's like draining to me i'm just like it's not necessary <laughs> so there was like a scene like that and i was like all right like i get it i get what you're trying to do let's like move on <laughs> um and it's not like um like sexy times it's like traumatic times so it's even more like all right let's move on <laughs> um but that's just me personally I don't, I don't like that in any kind of book so that was in this so that would make me like a little like ooh. But um, that's just a me thing, not the book thing. Um, but again, we had more of, we're having more of the like political monologue talk, which I don't really like because you can tell, like I said earlier, it's the author trying to get her points across. But like the other aspects I love, like the haunted house aspects, the characters like trying to deal with their trauma i i like all of that it's just mm, how it's all coming together maybe isn't exactly fitting right for me and now we just have the two girls who i told you like you weren't sure if they're like exes or friends and something happened between them and they had a falling out well now they're meeting again they just met right before part two to go to the back to the haunted house which again that's in the back it's not a spoiler <laughs> so they're gonna go back to this house where something went down and their friend who went with them never came out to see if they can like heal themselves i guess by going back so i think things are going to pick up i'm very curious what's going to happen there we'll see i'm going to read a bit more of this obviously today but now it is raining outside so i have to put on my raincoat and we will head off to the grocery store Obviously, <laughs> I am back. It was raining. It wasn't raining hard, but it was very windy. People were losing their umbrellas. This one guy was literally like a movie. Like his umbrella went inside out as he was walking, as he was crossing the street. And he was like dancing around. It was pretty funny. Anyway, let me show you what I got for the sangria. Let's see. I'm sure I could put you somewhere. Here am I. I'm pulling a books and la la because you're in my cabinet. <laughs> All right, so. For my sangrias, I kind of just make it up as I go. Um, I bought a salad kit. He's like, it's hungry, but I told everyone who's coming to bring snacks. Um, okay. All right, so for the sangria, you definitely need fruit. So I just got this little fruit pack. Instead of buying a bunch of different um, fruits, I figured this will be enough. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this thing, and I'm going to put the fruit in this, and then pour some rum and then let it like soak in the rum and then when you pour the sangria because I have this hold on I have this which has a little like spout obviously I'm not making this much sangria that's crazy talk <laughs> um, but it has a little spout here so you can just I'll pour the sangria in here so I figured people can pour their sangria and then add the fruit on top of their drink if they want that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna wash this and then for the sangria I like I said I want to do a rosé one so my hair looks so bad let me try to fix it a little <laughs> um, so I got this dark horse rosé it said it was like crisp and light and dry which I wanted a dry rosé so I got that one and then I do my sangrias with rum because I like rum I just do Bacardi you put some of that in there and then you do a juice of your choice sometimes I do um, orange juice but I decided I'm going to do this one it's like simply lemonade pour this not too much because I don't like it too sweet and then my friend when I have people over another time she brought this which is like oh seltzer water sparkling water and you always put the seltzer stuff right before you give the drink so it can still be kind of bubbly so i figured we'll put this in i thought the lemon lime would kind of go with the lemonade flavor so we will see just first pour the entire bottle of the rosé should we have a little taste yeah let's have a little taste this is when i went to the wine 
festival wait let me see we'll have a little taste this is when i went to the wine festival with my mom that's in a vlogtober actually let's have a little taste hopefully it is dry oh yeah yep that's exactly what i want it's like dry not too sweet okay and then we're going to do the rum Okay, so I normally sometimes just guesstimate the rum, and then it always ends up being way too much. So we're gonna do cups. <laughs> Should I taste a little bit of the rum? No, I'm just kidding, I'm gonna taste the rum. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do a cup, a cup. I'm thinking I should've gotten two bottles of the wine. Dang it, because this is not enough for <laughs> that many people that are coming over. I should run down. There's a little grocery store, like literally right next to me, right next door. If I should just run down and buy another rosé. I'm gonna go do that really quick so then I can like put it all together, okay. All right, I'm back. I found the exact same one. Was it more, was it more expensive? Yes, because that store is so expensive. <laughs> but it's okay, found the exact same one. So we're gonna pour more, because that's definitely not enough. All right, ooh, it smells so good. Okay, let's stir that. I prefer drier drinks, but I know most people prefer sweeter, especially a, sang a sangria that I don't want sweet drinks. <laughs> so I'm going to put some of the lemonade in. I think I'm just gonna do a cup, and we'll see. Again, I'm literally making this up. Okay, yeah, it's just not very sweet. So I'm afraid people won't like it. Um, I'm going to do another half a cup of rum because you can't really taste it oh yeah i think that's good okay so i'm going to we're going to close this put it in the fridge let it all soak up together and then right before i go down i'm going to pour some of the seltzer if it's like still if it's not flat because it's been in there for a second in my um thing for a second my hair got all over the place day of the uh readathon um i didn't update you guys after the pool party yesterday obviously i was having fun it was a really good time we sat out on the hot tub my sangria was a success everyone loved it they said it was a little too strong so if you make it <laughs> maybe just do the one cup of rum but it was really fun we had a good time um this morning i have been reading some of tell me i'm worthless i am determined to finish this book today i read almost 50 pages just now i am watching like an older sprint between aaron and um kayla who was looking at my eye yes my plan is to finish this book today and give you guys my final thoughts like i said i was in part two and we are at the house and we're finding out exactly what's going down oh my camera's flashing at me so i'll quickly finish this update but yes i will let you guys know my thoughts on this when i finish it my plans for today is to just chill and really do nothing um yeah that was a lot of socializing yesterday so today i'm good if i have no socializing and it's another gloomy day in chicago so don't need to go outside for anything <laughs> all right I re-straightened my hair because people decided to splash me with water after I said do not. And I was reading, tell me I'm worthless. I am on page 225, so I'm so close. I have like 30-ish more pages of this. So I'm going to sit and do one more reading sprint and I think I'll be able to get it done. So we're gonna do that. They are just now right about to go back to the house we already went to the found out what happened at the actual haunted house at the um, haunted house like what happened the initial time where the girl hannah um oh let me see that because i want to show you something in the book um the original girl their friend hannah who i told you like they all went to the house and then she didn't come out and we found out what happened it was very intense and creepy and like oh, very creepy very disturbing so I don't know why they want to go back, honestly. <laughs> I 
I don't know, but we'll see. One of the parts was told in like a different kind of way. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I don't want to necessarily give it away because it's kind of cool to see, but I can show you the formatting like changes a little bit. And I just think that's so cool. I like it when um, authors do that because it kind of, I don't know, switches things up. And I thought it was really, I thought that part was done really well. So I'm gonna sit and read the last bit of this and then give you all my final thoughts. But I thought we would light a candle. It's almost six o'clock, which is really sad. <laughs> I don't wanna go to work tomorrow. Um, so I thought today we could light Gotham City to see how it smells. And yeah, and I'll finish up this book and then give you guys some final thoughts. All right guys, so I did it, I finished. Tell me I'm worthless. Um, yeah, I'm not sure of my rating. <laughs> I can never come up with a rating right after I finish a book, but I'm thinking it's going to be a three star. Um, I kind of feel the same way that I have already told you all. As in, there are some things about this book and some aspects that I really, really loved, which were the actual like plot when we were with the characters and they were actually dealing with their trauma. We were going to the house and all the events happening at the house, even though they were very intense. Um, and their like interactions with each other. I really enjoyed those moments. But the, as I said before, the like paragraphs, not even paragraphs, like they're written just like here, I can show you an example. Like so at the end, you get this one chapter and it literally, it just keeps going. So I can show you. It just keeps going and it's just going on and on and on about like these various political things and nothing has to do with the plot. I mean like I, I get like this is the thing is that I get why she's doing it, the author, but like just on and on and on and I'm just like oh my gosh. <laughs> It's just like too much for me. Um, so I don't know, some of those could have been like cut down or integrated better into the actual plot instead of it being so distinct, like here is the political talk and like how we feel about it. And then here is the plot and story and then, then we'll have a little bit more political talk. I don't know, maybe it feels more integrated. I don't know. But that was the only thing that really, really bothered me. Everything else I really enjoyed except for also the extremely explicit um content is very explicit I, I do need to still go find reviews from trans people to see how they feel about this book i think that you could get some things out of it but it is extremely intense and as i said i could see people being harmed by this because it's that intense and i don't think i've said that about any book i've ever read <laughs> at least on my channel so Yes, there are aspects that I liked, aspects that I didn't like. I really love the haunted house aspect of it. It was very dark and creepy, and there are scenes where I was actually like, Ooh. and there's a scene where I was literally like afraid to turn the page. <laughs> you can tell, so I read a little bit of the author's note, I didn't, or the acknowledgement. I just read like the last little paragraph because it caught my eye, and it says that she wrote this during quarantine, which you can definitely tell. This was a book that was, um, like brought forth because of quarantine, because of Brexit. You can definitely tell that's a big thing in here. Um, and all of today's political climate um, and that this author was really thinking about all that while writing this book. So I think overall I'm giving it a three out of five stars. It definitely fit the bill for a horror book. So if you want some horror with some very intense social commentary and very intense scenes, that I recommend, but be warned. Definitely do your trigger warning research. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog now. I hope you all enjoyed coming along with me these last few days. I had a lot of fun vlogging. I do miss making videos. I'm just so busy, but I'm trying to make more time for my videos. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad I had this readathon so I could upload something else for you all. So let me know if you participated in Spring Flingoween, what you read, how it went, if you're interested in Tell Me I Am Worthless. Um, I know I just saw that there's going to be a Summerween, which will be fun. I'll definitely participate if I can. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye. <music>